What's up, everybody? Welcome to season three of the Life Journey podcast. Our first guest for season three, we have Gloria Otama, or as everybody knows, Glow Graphics. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Thank you for having me. <laughs> doing great. I'm glad that you're on today. Oh, man, like, we, I know we were supposed to do one in 2019, but hey, it's 2021 and we're about to get it going. So I'm super hyped. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> do it. Awesome. So let's dive into it. So a, a lot of, so let's dive into like when you, just growing up, growing up as a kid, like what city did you grow up in and what was your childhood like? Yeah. So I'm a daughter. I'm one of six kids to two Nigerian immigrant parents. And I was born and raised in California. So I very much that duality of having Nigerian culture in an American home caused this constant struggle of like, where do I fit in? Am I American or am I Nigerian? Mm. And I think I, I struggled with that conversation like well into my teenage years, but I'm a Bay Area girl. I love the Bay. I have missed the Bay. I try <laughs> to go back like every two, three years. And about four years ago, I went back and revisited everything. My preschool, my elementary schools, my middle school and my high school. And that was really exciting. So yeah, I'm a Bay Area girl, but I got Niger roots. Okay, all right. And that's gotta be pretty cool, like having having those deep roots. Cause my mother's Panamanian, so like Central American and Jamaican mixture. So like what what's do you got do you, have you always kept your like traditional uh or, like cultural traditions living in the States? Yeah, you know, I, I guess that there's always there's a saying that we say in Nigerian culture is Naija no de carry last, which means we're always like hustling. We're always mm -hmm gonna be at the top of something you know we're always building and working on something and i think i've always like kept that in my spirit like i've always been like yo like if there's a competition because i'm very competitive it's like why can't i be first right. <laughs> so i'm i think i kept that nigerian hustle in me uh growing up but yeah culturally like a lot of like whenever i go back home a lot of what we do what we eat is still very nigerian but I would say if I had to choose which one I resonate with more, it's probably American. American, okay, awesome. So what was your first trip into what country? Yeah, so I studied abroad in 2013. So my first trip was to the UK. Okay. And yeah, I, I very much, up until I was 20, I was 22 the first time I left the country. And I always thought travel was something that like rich white folks did. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> I was just like, I've never seen black people travel. I don't know any black person that travels. So I didn't think it was something that was affordable to me until I studied abroad. And that was like my first exposure. Like once I studied abroad in the UK, I took like a train to Scotland, my first flight to Spain and Portugal and Morocco. And I just kind of like ventured from there. Okay, awesome. And what was that, I guess that whole experience did that that just opened up the whole array of just like I need to travel because you've been to what eighty plus countries? Or Yeah, so yeah, okay. I think I'm at eighty three. You know, it's funny because I like round numbers. So I'm like at eighty three, <laughs> but it doesn't I'm not gonna tell you that I've been at eighty three countries. I'm just gonna be like over eighty. <laughs> I got over eighty, right. Exactly. I got you. But yeah, that definitely opened me up because again, you're only, sometimes you, you got to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. And you only believe as far as what you see on TV or what your parents show you. And nobody black ever showed me that like black women, black people, you can go to Spain for cheap. You can go to Morocco for cheap. You can see the world and, and reinvent yourself. And it's normal, you know? And I think I when I normalized it for myself, my first goal and mission was like, how do I normalize this? For other people in this community, right? No, no, that's and that's awesome mindset to have. Like, so with, while traveling, while being able to explore the world, how did you dive into entrepreneurship? Like, you're a solopreneur. How did you dive into it? And you built this brand from scratch and and multiple courses and stuff. Tell me about that. How how did you get into it? Yes, and I'm sorry. I'm just gonna turn off my oven. Oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Don't want to burn the biscuits. <laughs> okay, how did I get started into entrepreneurship? Can you ask the question again and then we'll start from there? Yeah, I'll say and I'll make sure to chop this up. Um, so, so next question we want to ask is, how did you dive into entrepreneurship? Uh, you built this amazing brand, um, have tons of followers, work with a lot of different brands around the world. 
how did you build this brand as a solopreneur? Yeah, I think for me, I never saw the brand or the business. I always saw connection and storytelling. And I think anyone who's looking to build something powerful with their online brand or their personal brand, you got to figure out a way to like really get to the, the core or the meat of what you love doing. And I genuinely loved sharing stories. I genuinely loved because especially photography was like my first lane and then um, storytelling and blogging was my second. So I gen genuinely love showing people the world through my eyes, photography, and then telling my stories because there weren't enough black stories out there and finding those two verticals of ways that I can connect with other people or have them see themselves in, in me or in what I was seeing and experiencing helped me fall in love with the mission and the craft of what I was doing from there when you're just consistent enough, when you've been around long enough, when you're doing something you love, it's a byproduct that you're gonna grow something bigger than yourself. And I think I've just, I've been in digital media for 19 years. I started my first blog at 11. So I've really wow. just, I've been doing this for so long <laughs> that it was like a matter of time before finally people realized how dope I am. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you built this brand. I mean, you, you, you definitely like have, uh, the, the videos, the pictures, like everywhere you travel, like you really know how to like show yourself, like having a great time. I mean, you, you've definitely done an amazing job. And like, I don't know, I love, I love like you even speaking at different conferences and stuff like that, educating people about travel. Uh, I don't know, I've been, I've been, I've been watching and I've definitely been impressed like a lot about what you've done and stuff. So kudos to you on the success that you've had and the success, more of the success that you're going to be having. So I'm super excited for you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So next question is, how could someone like dive into the same lane as you? So if it's, a, if it's someone that's in high school or college, a uh, young lady, a young man, that they, they're seeing you, they're following you, they're like, man, like I want to be like her one day, or I want to do something similar. How, how, where do they start? And first and foremost, get sleep. I skipped sleep <laughs> all of my 20s. Don't don't skip that stuff because you're going to enter 30. I'm 30 now. And I feel like my whole year was consumed by naps because mm. my body was just so tired. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, I think you got to pick a lane. So there's only three types of ways that you can build like a, a creator brand, you know, content mm. creation. You're either going to be good at photography, filmmaking, or writing. So mm. figure out, even if, let, let's say you're not good at any of those three, figure out the one that's going to be the thing that drives you forward because you can't scatter yourself trying for a great filmmaker and also a really good writer. You've got to pick one of those three and dominate that lane. Mm. Because what's going to happen is if you focus on just writing and just being a really strong storyteller, you're going to do, you're going to move. If you scatter yourself across multiple things, you're going to move maybe an inch across those multiple things. You stick in one lane, you're going to move a mile in that lane. And a lot of people don't move that mile because they're trying to scatter themselves, trying to get good at everything. So if you can figure out, okay, do I want to really learn photography, filmmaking, or to be a really strong writer, pick one so that you become the go-to person for everything that has to do with that lane. Right. And for me, it was writing. Like, you need a strong story to get glow. Yo, get glow. Because I was like, I want to be that go-to person in mm. this lane. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Real talk. No, that's real talk. So... What was what's the what's the quote that's always been a the long long saying uh be a master I, I forgot the what's the quote again um the, uh, yeah be, uh, uh, uh jack, one, one. Jack, jack of all trades master of none right, exactly <laughs> exactly and then I've heard the opposite it was like you be jack of all trades and master of them all and I'm like oh you know that takes a long time <laughs> both, yeah. both ways but yeah you're right that's that's so true like being able to focus in one lane. What you're good at and then once you master that you move on to the next one and keep going from there some people try to dive into too much and i yeah i mean i've been a, hey that's that's me over here i've done that before i had to lock in on my lane what i'm good at hey i know that I played football for tons of years so taking that sport and turning it into a course for kids doing that and then marketing i fell into just by chance so like fell into doing that creating that business of iron visual so now like i've been learning studying and I'm, it's in my lane now. So like those two things, definitely. So I, I feel you on that. Like gotta stay focused on, stay focused. As my grandma Panama says, stay focused. She said, so, yeah. Um, what's, your favorite, <laughs> what's your favorite restaurant 
um, at your in your hometown in your favorite restaurant abroad? So the concept of home is tricky. The audio is a little bit. Um, so the concept of home is tricky because I've never really. I was born in the Bay. I went to high school in Arizona, college in Kansas, and then lived abroad for seven and a half years. So I've never really had one place that I consider home. So, but I, but I will say this: I feel at home when I'm eating <laughs> Italian food, Indian food, or Chinese food. Like those are my comfort meals. And no matter where I was traveling, no matter what city or country or cuisine, I was like, I gotta find an Italian restaurant. I gotta have me some garlic naan and tikka masala. Like I would find like my staple foods because when everything around you is unfamiliar, you've got to find familiarity in something that you're doing. And for me, that was in food. Uh, that, I mean, food, internationally food is amazing. I mean, like you can, one one spot I would say like, well, you've probably been to Ethiopia, I'm guessing. Oh, I haven't, no. I mean, uh, if you go to Addis Ababa, the capital, they have some amazing, Ethiopian food is bomb. Like, this is amazing food, like the different culture. I'm just, you know, it's probably not even the best. Like when you go to like different spots, the room, there's so many different types of food. So, you know, definitely thanks for sharing that because um, there's a lot of people that that want, that don't travel around like the world at all. They don't leave the U.S. They will always want to know like, well, they see, you know, people see Africa on the news and are scared to travel to Africa or different countries. And it's like, just go, just go and see. And you're gonna, you're gonna find out so much. You're gonna meet some amazing people. How about that? How, what amazing people have you met abroad and how have they helped you get to where you like, or add value to your life or help you in a specific way? Yeah, I think what's so dope is that you realize everyone has a story and everyone is connected more than we're separated. A lot of people say, oh, that's the right way to do it and that's the wrong way. I'm like, no, there's no right or wrong when you travel, just different. People do things differently and it puts things into perspective. Like, wow, like this person was raised halfway across the world and this is how they view X, you know, and here's how I view X. But you can come together and, and bond over the fact that like your different identities and labels and things that have shaped you, a lot of it is, you know, social conditioning. And you get to figure out what parts of that you want to actively unlearn and which parts you want to relearn. And I think travel for me was the best teacher because a lot of what I learned or knew was conditioning based off my culture, my parents, my surroundings, my own education, which we know the US education education system is, is deeply flawed. And it was so great to give myself the opportunity to do firsthand learning through people and their own storytelling. Mm. Mm. And that's and that's definitely added on to your experience a lot, huh? Like, and it has helped along with, like you said, writing story. And, like, and I guess, like, when you, when you talk about storytelling, um, I guess, like, in what way have you been able to leverage that with, with, I guess, within movies or like within just any type of content? Because you've done a lot of blogs, so I guess, like, on what way do you like utilize that talent to help others or within your business? Yeah, so I think sto story is the cornerstone of, of any successful business. If you don't have a story or find a way to connect your product or that your person or whatever mm -hmm. to like your audience or a reader, you have nothing. And there's this really good book called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. And it really touches on how every good story has a hero. And you don't want to position yourself as the hero, you want to posi position yourself as the guide so that the reader is the one that is the hero and you're taking them along the journey to that ultimate revelation or discovery. And storytelling for me has been a way to kind of universalize all of the experiences that we all go through. We all love, we all feel pain, we all want to find purpose. There's these universal tr truths to humanity and this lived experience that I think a lot of us yeah, we think like, oh, I can't relate because their culture, their country, their religion is different. But it's like th that universal storyline, we all share the same pain and love and hurt and regrets and all that kind of stuff. And I think if you can learn how to be a really good storyteller, you'll build a really strong brand. Mm, that's so true. And I love that book, by the way. Uh, Yay, yeah. I'm glad you read it. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah. There. And they, I think they had like a, a couple workshops and stuff on breaking it down even more. Um, 
I think as well too, but never dove into it. But definitely a great book for sure. Um, oh, that's that's good stuff. So I guess in regards to this, like you from from the brand that you've built to this point, in regards to like you being able to you know speak on stages, you being able to help different companies because you know when Clubhouse. By the way, if you don't know who Club what Clubhouse is, download the app right now. <laughs> Make sure you download it. It's a great space for networking. On Clubhouse, actually about like uh, with big brands and being able to like consistently close big brands. Um, I don't know, like, has that been from like you building that following along with traveling and networking or has it been from, or just like just experience, like just reps, just constantly rep repping it out? That's a, that's a really good question. I would say it's a combination of building a strong brand. Like a lot of sponsors or people that have that money to spend in their marketing budget, they're not going to just throw it at any influencer. They're going to throw it at the influencers that know how to connect a message with their audience. Mm -hmm. And when you build a relationship with your audience, because at the end of the day, sponsors are paying for access to your audience, not for you, but like maybe the virtual real estate, they want to live on your page somewhere, but it's access to your audience because your audience trusts you. You're, you built that like, know, and trust factor with your audience. It means that what you post, the brands that you support, they're going to want to support them too. So, the the i guess success that i've had with sponsors and, and brand partnerships um obviously has come with a bit of time and some reps but the biggest thing is i study my craft so deeply and i care so much about like what i put like i turn down more sponsorships than i actually accept because i'm i'm so picky and i'm very genuine with what what i'm sharing on my page and if i believe in something whether it's a mission or the brand uh, themselves I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it and it's not going to come out of left field. I think when, when influencers or people start to post brands left and right, their audience starts to view it as like, oh, this is just, they're just getting paid. And your audience almost like, I don't want to say, cause your audience at the end of the day, they want to see you win. But if you're posting ads every other day, they feel like they're being sold to you and they don't mm. want, you don't want to commercialize them and they don't like that feeling. It feels icky. So when I do accept a brand partnership, like once every three months, it's literally, I'm so picky. They're like, yes, Globe, get, get your money. You know? <laughs> They're so excited because they know that I'm not accepting any random check left and right. right. Like when I do accept one, it's because I truly believe in the partnership. Mm, that is deep. Can you, can you hear me, sir? Uh oh, I think Yes, yes. Okay, there we go. I said, yeah, connection unstable. No, that is awesome, though. And that's great that you do that because, yeah, a lot everybody is, sees the dollar sign. Like, oh, you don't want to accept it. But like you said, you're staying genuine and authentic who you are. And yeah, like they're getting a hype because like that is like they know that anybody doesn't just, you just don't accept anybody. That is amazing. And that's great that you take it. That's why, that's why they keep coming to you because just because of that reason. Uh, that And I, that is amazing to hear. I hear, uh, there's another gentleman on YouTube. Uh, he does like more, talks about finances and uh, financial stuff on uh, Robinhood. And same thing, like tons of brands have come down. He said he denies a lot of them because he doesn't either believe in their product or he wants to stay authentic. So it's great hearing another creative say that that uh, that is staying true to who they are. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, it's hard. On the years where I was surviving on $10 a day or just traveling on a shoestring budget, and you would get, like, because back in, like, 2014, like, influencer marketing isn't what it used to be because um, before there wasn't even a name for it, but you would get this $100 offer here, $200 offer there, and at the time, that would carry me for about a week. And so I'm like, oh, I could be good for a week or... You know, and you have to constantly like battle, like, you know, will my audience like no longer trust what I say because of this quick $100? And you have right. to really, instead of accepting the crumbs, these like small offers, why don't you find the brand and the company that you already love and just them $1,000? That way you can one, make more money and then two, define the partnership on your terms based off of something that's authentic and true to you. And even like now, fast forward five years, these brands are paying out six figure contracts and six figure partnerships to personal brands and influencers who are doing a really good job of mm. again, relaying brand messaging, also doing it in an engaging way. Because now I, I think there's a, a quote or a stat that says you get fed up to 6,000 marketing messages every single day. 
between social media, between billboards and ads and all that kind of stuff. So how are you getting people to stop their scroll, to focus on the message that you're posting, especially right. when you're working on a brand partnership? So it, it, it's really, it's becoming, I don't want to say too super saturated, but you know, everyone is, is fighting for attention. So right. you've got to find ways where you don't only capture or captivate people's attention because they stop their scroll, but they're actively going to your page to seek you out. Like, I haven't seen Glow on my feed in a little bit. Let me type in her, her page and go to her, her page and see what she's posted. Like, you want that type of engagement and support. Mm, that's real talk right there. Those are gems. She's dropping gems, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dropping gems, yeah. Now this is awesome. Um, yeah, because a lot of people, a lot of people are just like trying to just get followers and not really truly trying to help people i guess like just trying to just be famous online and like you said bringing that value uh once you bring that value people notice you and brands notice you and they really want to like connect themselves to you and this is basically the new way of uh marketing and advertising their their products and stuff too so tv's like dwindling down right <laughs> so it's uh social <laughs> at this point yeah i'm excited to see what like digital marketing space looks like in 10 years like everything will be social everything everything is gonna be crazy and i think COVID definitely covid has sped it up for sure <laughs> definitely has sped it up uh you know a whole whole lot um companies that really didn't have a lot of tech you know technology or whatever like gotta gotta spend the money now <laughs> gotta, spend the, gotta spend the cash you know to do it so uh is there is, is there any uh, anything else i guess you would like to say in regards to um, those who are listening that want to travel more, that want to take that step, that leap, because again, people don't got to get uncomfortable. People are so comfortable at home, don't want to make the step to go abroad or start that business. Um, I guess like, what would be something you will let them know to really like take that leap and do it? Yeah, so oh, obviously right man. now, if you're listening and you've never like traveled abroad before and you're just like terrified at the idea and then add COVID on top of that, like I get it. Um, I think be cognizant of the, I think actually, and this is maybe I might catch some flack for saying this, but I think travel is safer now than it was before because things mm. are actually cleans now. There's a reason to clean things. You, man, these airlines, these airports, they were getting scrubbed down like they are now. <laughs> and so it's kind of dope to see the, the, the protocols that people have in place. And if anything as well, like travel's been reset, like Rome and Paris and all of these cities that were saturated with tourists, it, it's back down. It, it, tourists are cut in half. Like prices are cheaper there's no more lines like it's so dope. i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna travel a lot this year and i'm gonna be so excited to visit places that aren't overrun by tourists because of the restrictions in place but you there's still a way to do it safely i do recommend if you are going to travel don't do it in a group do it as a solo traveler or with your partner or spouse or with like one person so you guys keep it safe and, and be manageable um, there's also, uh, what is it called? One Medical is an on-demand uh, app for COVID okay. testing. So for, for the flights and stuff, you still okay. gotta get the 72 hours, you know, of negative testing beforehand. So One Medical is really nice to have handy when you need an on-demand doctor to get that COVID-19 test. And yeah, I, I think I, my favorite memories all happened outside of this country, outside of the US. Like travel is so freaking magical and i think it keeps me curious it keeps me young it keeps me just hopeful you know there, there's something that something to be said about that first plane ride across the atlantic or just that first experience in this random country where you don't understand a lick of the language you can't read any signs but you still feel so at peace like i love that mm. That is deep. That is deep. Then, and you see, yeah, you you seem joyful. You seem like you are enjoying your life, and you're living it to the fullest. And that's that's the life journey. That's why the podcast is named the way it is because you gotta you gotta live your life the way you are. I, I only talk to people that are doing it at a high level, that are trying to like make change and impact with their message and purpose. And I guess uh, let's ask you that, that question. Do you, and I, this is a tough question for everybody, but do you feel like you're living your purpose? I, I love that question. And I think purpose is something that if you're not at a place where you're questioning your purpose or 
your life's trajectory like gets that place because that's what makes you ask the harder questions and that's what makes you have better discernment who you should and shouldn't be hanging around what books you should be reading what course of action you should be taking and i'm constantly questioning my purpose in a way where it's like am i living in my purpose to its highest potential because there's always more and I'm, i struggle between like how do i show uh, gratitude for the presence for for my present moments but also be in pursuit of more because i know that the, the, the territory the expansion that i know god wants to put in my life and bless me with like it's still out there and there's still more work to be done and i almost fear complacency more than failure like getting to a place where i feel like i no longer have to try that terrifies me more than failure mm -hmm. i feel you on that one too yeah procrastination and being being yeah like this complacent where you at where you're at it doesn't yeah you got to keep shooting yeah. for more <laughs> yeah so it's Absolutely. Really like but purpose is also a never ending conversation so i definitely feel like i'm living in my purpose and shedding light on people and things and stories that need attention but obviously there's always more work to be done always more work to be done so true so true last question can you leave the folks with a quote that they can take with with for the rest of their lives mm, <laughs> gosh I have, I, it's funny because i i have a quote book of like all my favorite like oh, just yeah. oh, quotes oh. from articles podcast stories no 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 but let me let me in the moment a quote for in the moment um what, what's that quote about and it's gonna be anonymous because i don't remember who's the originator of it but it's like your talent is like your god-given talent is a gift from god but how you use that talent talent is your gift to the world so mm. it's like what are you doing with your god-given talents there's something that comes easier to you then 99% of people, like, are you using that to make this world a better place? Are you living in line with like your purpose and mission with those talents? Mm -hmm. What is going to be the thing that you're doing to leave this world a better place? If you only lived to make your life better and no one else's, that's not a life to me. Mm -hmm. That's deep. That's deep. I'm gonna have to write that one down and put it, I'm gonna have to put it on the wall or something for sure. I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin it right in my office. I appreciate okay. that and everybody else does it. <laughs> we'll dropping gems on the podcast. <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much for uh, coming on here today. I know it's been a long time us getting to get this done, but we got it done. Super excited to get this posted. Um, thank you so much. Shout every everything that you got going on. If it's any courses, instant, shout everything out right now. So everybody's listening. Thank you so much. No, this is this has been great. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Glow Graphics. And if you want to learn more about digital content creation, sponsorships, all that stuff, you can go to learnwithglow.com. Fantastic. And everybody, make sure I'm also I know you didn't talk really talk about it. Make sure you go to her site, check out her. She has courses on there. She has a lot of uh, information that you can check out if you're interested in kind of going down the path that she's been on in her journey. So, Lo, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate you. Hopefully, we, you know, we get you back on season four. And um, yeah, thanks. Pleasure.